Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series. This lesson is called Demystifying Japanese Dashi Based Sauces. You can also take my 104 lesson cooking course. It's called Learning to Cook Like a Pro One Small Plate at a Time. It starts off easy, it gets progressively harder, and it ends with the ultimate challenge, which is actually five lessons in one. You can also watch my other special series like Italian faves, impress your date, sauce to, sauces to die for, Spain on a small plate, and also bonus lessons like how to break down a chicken or how to roast chestnuts. This lesson, lesson is about dashi based sauces. And each one of these sauces is different depending on the dish it's going to be used for or the cooking technique that it's going to be used for. Now, what exactly is dashi? Dashi is a very, very simple quick stock or a base that's used in soups and stews. This is Japanese cooking. Soups and stews, it's also used in marinades, it's used in sauces, and also in other dishes. And it's really the foundation for a very large part of Japanese cuisine. It's used in a lot of different Japanese dishes. And it also uh, has umami. It adds umami to uh, any dish it's used in. What's umami? Umami is the so-called fifth flavor. We have sweet, salty, bitter, and sour. Okay, those are the four well-known flavors in the West. In Japan, there's also known, uh, there's also this fifth flavor called umami. And there's no direct translation for it. Some people say it means tasty or it means savory. Now, first we're gonna talk about common dashi. And Common dashi is only made of a couple of components. And those components are uh, kombu. Sometimes you'll see it spelled K-O-M-B-U. Sometimes you'll see it spelled K-O-N-B-U. And uh, this is a kelp, okay? And it's like a dark green. And sometimes it's all curled up like this. Uh, other times it's more of a, it's more of a, a flat piece. And it has this uh, white powder on it, okay? When you go to use this, you can brush Brush it off, but do not wash off the white powder. The white powder is very important for providing flavor. Now, um, uh, that is kombu, okay? Dried kelp. And if you make dashi with just the kombu, okay? It's called shojin dashi, which means vegetarian dashi because this is a vegetable, has no animal products in it, okay? The other ingredient for common dashi is uh, katsuoboshi, or um, I'm sorry, katsuobushi, which uh, is uh, bonito flakes. It's flakes that have been shaved off of dried and smoked uh, skipjack tuna called bonito. And uh, when uh, you make these flakes in Japanese, it's called katsuobushi. Okay, and uh, it's, it's easy to buy these uh, in most places in the United States in this uh, flake form. They come in little bags. Uh, but in Japan, uh, you can also find it in block form. And the blocks are um, pieces of skipjack tuna that have not been shaved. I, this one is in a vacuum sealed bag right now, so I'm not going to take it out. But uh, these are hard as a rock, okay? And they're shaved using something called a katsuobushi bako. Uh, this is actually kind of like a, a carpenter's plane. It has a blade on it. Uh, you can see the blade right here. It's very sharp. And it sits over this uh, wooden box, and you put the blade on top, and then you push the uh, katsuobushi uh, over the top of it, and it shaves the, uh, the fish into uh, the box below. And uh, now, there's not a whole lot of uh, katsuobushi that's shaved in the United States. Uh, and even in Japan, it's not really shaved like that much anymore. It's mostly... Uh, available in the packages where it's already been shaped. Now I have a separate lesson called Making Dashi in my Japanese Faves series. Now um, that those two ingredients, the kombu and the katsuobushi, those are the only two ingredients plus water to make common dashi. Now there are variations on dashi. Uh, one is called ariko dashi or uh, niboshi dashi. And uh, these are made with small dried fish, dried anchovies or dried um, sardines, instead of using the uh, katsuobushi. And another variation is shiitake dashi, uh, which is made with shiitake mushrooms. Now, I have a slide here which uh, shows you 
uh, the, the dashi components. Now, as you can see, all types of dashi have kombu. And uh, katsuobushi dashi, uh, uh, that also uses kombu plus bonito flakes. Uh, the eriko dashi uses dried fish, and the shiitake dashi uses mushroom. But they all have, uh, they all have the, um, the kombu in them. Now let's talk about the color and the quality of dashi, or not so much the dashi itself, but sauces that might be made with dashi. And uh, most sauces that are made with dashi use dark soy sauce, uh, which is called uh, koikuchi soy sauce, just means dark soy sauce. The Japanese word for soy sauce is shoyu, so I usually refer to shoyu. And I don't usually buy the common brands of shoyu that are out there. I tend to look for smaller producers. You always want to try to use good quality ingredients when you're making a sauce with dashi. And if you use the, uh, the dark soy sauce, it will, add the, the, uh, it will add color to the sauce, okay? Now, you can also make something called shiro dashi, which is dashi to which you've added um, white soy sauce. It's not really white, it's just light colored soy sauce, also known as usukuchi soy sauce. Forget, forgive my Japanese. Um, so this light colored soy sauce, uh, don't mistake this for light soy sauce. Light soy sauce that you see in the, uh, in the uh, bottles that have the green tops in the sushi restaurant, those are lighter in uh, sodium, okay? That's light soy sauce. Light colored soy sauce is actually heavier in sodium, but it's lighter in color, and it doesn't add color or it doesn't add as much color to whatever sauce you might use it in. Now let's talk about the quality of uh, dashi. Now uh, dashi, uh, basically there's two qualities of dashi. One is ichiban and the second is niban. And they simply mean first dashi and second dashi. Ichiban is first dashi and niban is second dashi. And um, first dashi is considered to be more delicate. Uh, it's used in clear soups. And uh, niban dashi or second dashi is considered to be stronger and it's used in other dishes. Uh, and now, how do you make them? Well, I have a separate lesson on how to make dashi, but basically what you do is you soak the kombu overnight. You don't have to, but uh, uh, a lot of uh, cooks will soak the kombu overnight, and then they will bring it to a boil, just bring it to a boil. The moment that a bubble starts to bubble, take that kombu out of there and add the bonito flakes and let them sink to the bottom of the pot. And after they've sunk to the bottom of the pot, which only takes seconds usually, 30 seconds to a minute, you strain it and uh, it's done. First dashi is done, okay? And now um, you keep those ingredients, the kombu and the uh, bonito flex that you use to make the first dashi, and you do it again. You make it uh, another batch, right? And that is second dashi. All right, let's talk about dashi building blocks. Now, a basic building block for dashi-based sauces is called keishi. We'll talk about what that is a little bit later on, but basically to make uh, dashi-based sauces, one way you can do it is to start with keishi, then add other ingredients to build your sauce. Then there is also another building block called mensuyu. Now mensuyu is a concentrated soup base it's made with dashi components, not dashi, not the dashi I just described, where you bring the kombu to a boil and you add the bonito flakes to the water, not that. Uh, with uh, mensuyu, you're starting with the dashi components, the kombu and the bonito flakes and some other ingredients to make your concentrated soup base. And then you dilute it later uh, when you use it, as compared to making dashi, which is made with a quantity of water and when it's finished, you just add some other ingredients to it. You have a sauce. With mensuyu, you make a concentrated base and then you dilute it later on. Now, let's talk about the ingredients of these building blocks. Now, for kayeshi, uh, the ingredients are uh, usually shoyu, Japanese-based soy sauce. It can either be the dark soy sauce or the light-colored soy sauce. That's the koichi soy sauce or the usakuchi soy sauce. Also, another ingredient is mirin, which is a sweetened, basically it's a, a derivative of sake, and it's a sweet cooking um, fermented beverage, basically. Some people call it wine, it's not really wine. Another ingredient of kayashi is sugar. 
Some people use tamari instead of or in addition to shoyu. And uh, the difference between uh, tamari and shoyu is that tamari doesn't have any wheat in it, okay, so it's actually gluten free. And then some people will use sake to make kayashi. Now, let's talk about the ingredients of mensuyu. Uh, now, you do not use any dashi to make mensuyu, as I mentioned before, but you use all of the ingredients I mentioned before. You use shoyu, mirin, sugar, tamari, sake, and then you'd also use kombu and bonito flakes. And all of these ingredients together would be used to make um, the mensuyu, but remember, you don't use dashi that's already made, you just use the components of dashi. Then, dashi based sauces, uh, in, in, in the case of dashi based sauces, you make the dashi first, okay? And preferably, you're going to use ichiban, that's the first dashi, but it's not, it's, it's a lot more important to Japanese cooks than it is to American cooks. You could use the first dashi, I often use first dashi or second dashi to make these dashi based sauces. So you make the dashi first, and then you add to that shoyu, again, it can either be the light colored shoyu or the dark shoyu, and you add mirin and sake and sugar, and you may add tamari. Now the basic rules of making any of these sauces, as I mentioned before, is always use high quality ingredients. Don't use cheap shoyu, okay? Use good shoyu, all right? And when I give you uh, measurements later on in this lesson, when I talk about ounces, that's always ounces by weight, okay? Ounces by weight, so you have to use a kitchen scale to measure. And, uh, and, and just for convenience, whenever I refer to dashi in this lesson, I'm referring to katsuobushi dashi, uh, unless otherwise specified. And what that means is I'm not referring to the vegetarian dashi, and I'm, I'm not using, I'm not referring to variations on dashi, which could be shiitake or made with dried, other dried fish. When I talk about dashi, I'm always talking about dashi made with kanbu and katsubushi. Okay? Now, the differences between these sauces can seem confusing, especially once I start showing the charts a little bit later on with the ingredients. Uh, and they may seem to be the same or almost the same. But when they're used in different proportions, they have different uses. And when you talk about dashi-based sauces versus using mensuyu to make a sauce, it's really two different ways of making similar things, all right? You can either make the sauce using dashi, or you can make the sauce using mensuyu, which includes the dashi components, all right? Different ways of making similar things. Now, the recipes for these sauces are very intentional and they are very personal. Even though they might seem to be very similar, sometimes they might even seem to be the same, uh, they're very personal and very intentional uh, according to the chef, okay? Now, what's important to understand is that Japanese restaurants are not in Japan, are not, different, are not the same as Japanese restaurants in the United States. In the United States, you go to a Japanese restaurant, they have all different dishes. They might have soba noodles, udon noodles, they have sushi. In Japan, that's unusual. In Japan, most restaurants have one thing. They specialize in one thing. They might specialize in ramen. They might specialize in uh, udon. They might specialize in soba. They might specialize in somen, all those different types of noodles. Sushi restaurants tend to only have sushi, okay? And then there's a lot of other types of Japanese cuisine, and the restaurants tend to be highly specialized. So the chef, let's say it's a, uh, an udon restaurant, the chef is only going to make the sauces for his or her udon uh, recipes, okay? And udon can be hot or cold, so that chef would have a hot sauce and would have a cold sauce. Now that chef's hot sauce and cold sauce might be the same as some other chefs, or they might be slightly different. Or it might be that some other chef's soba sauce is the same as this chef's udon sauce. But it doesn't really matter so much because, again, they're highly personal, they're highly intentional, and they're often secret because restaurants don't have all of these different dishes. Uh, they, they, uh, you don't have to worry about situations where one sauce is the same as another sauce. Okay? They might, they're going to be very specialized. Now, I want to talk about uh, sources a little bit. And... Um, I am giving you my recipes for all of these sauces, but I'm also giving you the recipes of two other uh, chefs. One is um, Hiroko Shimbo from 
the cookbook the japanese kitchen this is a great great cookbook ok and so i'm going to be giving the recipes from this book for a couple of the sauces and in addition to my recipe and then i'm also going to be using this cookbook which is from nancy singleton hachizu or hachizu i'm not quite sure how it's pronounced and this book is just called japan the cookbook again another great cookbook ok so i'm going to be giving recipes from my my recipe and also from those two cookbooks and also from some other sources now um let's talk a little bit about kayashi ok now i have um a kayashi recipe in another one of my lessons in my japanese fave series called demystifying shoyu based sauces all right i also have another lesson in my japanese fave series called uh making kayashi and sugajiro all right so there's two other lessons where i talk about kayashi and to make kayashi basically you mix together these ingredients in a saucepan you bring them to a boil and when i say bring to a boil i mean just to a boil so the moment it starts to boil you turn it down to a simmer let it simmer for five to ten minutes don't reduce the volume okay so you want it to be simmering not boiling so that it doesn't reduce you don't want the uh, all of the sauce to be leaving the pan as steam okay you want to keep the same volume just simmer it five to ten minutes then cool it then wait to use it now uh, purists will say that kayashi should sit for a while before it's used uh, several days to a week before you use it um, Sometimes I'm not so pure. Sometimes I just make the kayashi and then I use it, okay? Sometimes I just mix all the ingredients into a sauce at the same time and don't make the kayashi separately. But usually uh, I do make kayashi in advance and I keep it in the fridge and then I, and I use it uh, when I need it. So that way it's had time to what I call flavorate. The, um, the uh, ingredients have had time to kind of meld together, okay? Now, looking at this chart on the screen, uh, you can see here that I have um, three recipes for kayashi. Uh, my recipe, the recipe from the Shimbo cookbook, and the recipe from the Hachisu cookbook, or Hachisu. And um, I, we're all using shoyu, um, but I'm the only one that's using the usukuchi shoyu. Uh, Shimbo uses tamari, I don't, and um, two of them are using mirin and then they're all using sugar but you can see the proportions are all slightly different okay so um again this is highly personal to the chef and um and highly intentional okay all right now let's talk about dashi based sauces and there are three basic dashi based sauces that we're going to talk about today kakajiro tsukajiro and tensuyu okay now kakajiro basically is uh, used uh, to uh, pour over hot udon or soba noodles, okay? So it's a hot sauce, all right? And it is milder than sukajiro. Sukajiro is stronger sauce, but it's used for cold noodles. And usually you don't pour it over the noodles. You have the, the sauce in a bowl, and then you dip the noodles into it and eat the noodles, okay? So with the hot sauce, you pour it over the noodles, with the cold sauce, you dip, dip the noodles into it. Uh, the hot sauce is milder, the cold sauce is stronger. Then there's tensuyu, and tensuyu is used to make dipping sauces, such as um, a dipping sauce for fried food, such as tempura, all right? Now, let's look at this chart uh, of how to make kakajiro. And again, I'm providing you with three recipes uh, they all call for dashi. Um, Hachisu is using uh, kayashi, and uh, the other two are not. But um, instead of using kayashi, those other two um, uh, recipes are using shoyu, either the dark shoyu or the light, sh light color shoyu, or both. Uh, and uh, one of them is using mirin and sake and then uh, one of them uses some sugar. So, you know, those are ingredients that were in kayashi. Kayashi is made up of shoyu, mirin, sake, and sugar, right? So what, what uh, Hachisu is doing is, is uh, she makes her kayashi, and then she adds it to her dashi, and she has a sauce. What I'm doing instead, and what Shimbo is doing, 
uh, is starting with dashi and then just adding some ingredients to it instead of making a kayashi, okay? But you could make kayashi first and use that with your dashi just as uh, Hachisu does. Now let's talk about, look at the chart for Sukajiro. Same type of thing. Um, uh, and again, here, uh, Hachisu is using dashi and then adding kayashi to it. And um, my recipe, I do the same thing. I start with dashi, I add some extra bonito flakes, and then I add some kayashi to that, and I have Sukajiro. Shimbo, on the other hand, is not using, or oh, I'm sorry, Shimbo is using kayashi, uh, and in addition to that, is adding some extra bonito flakes, some extra shoyu, some um, tamari, and also some sugar. Now let's look at this chart for Tensuyu. Uh, again, uh, Hachisu is using dashi and adding keishi to that, and that's her sauce, all right? My sauce, uh, I'm starting with dashi, I'm not using keishi, I'm adding shoyu and mirin, and I'm also using some Japanese black sugar or Japanese brown sugar. Uh, you can get this on the internet. I'll try to provide a source for it. Um, but um, uh, if you can't find these Japanese black sugar or brown sugar, you could use uh, uh, American brown sugar. And then Shimbo um, does something similar to me. Uses the, the uh, dashi and then adds shoyu and some uh, light-colored uh, light shoyu and mirin and then some sugar. Uh, in my recipe, you might see I also mentioned grated daikon. That, strictly speaking, that's not really part of uh, making the sauce. It's more of a garnish for the sauce. And I'll talk about garnishes a little bit later on. Now let's look at this comparison chart. Now uh, on this chart, what I've done is I have um, included those three recipes for uh, the kakajiro, the sukajiro, and the tensuya. So you can kind of see how they're similar and how they're different. And if you study this chart, uh, you will see that um, uh, that um, uh, Hachisu, as I mentioned before, is only using dashi and then adding uh, keishi. And uh, the other recipes are mostly not using keishi and are starting with dashi and then adding the other ingredients. And then you can look at the, uh, the relative proportions. And I mentioned earlier that uh, Kakajiro tends to be lighter and Tsukajiro tends to be uh, stronger. And you can see that when you look at the different proportions of the um, ingredients that are used. Now let's talk about Mensuyu. Remember, this is a, a concentrated base for broths and sauces. It's also known as Tsuyu, Tsuyu, Tsuyu. And um, when you talk about mensuyu versus dashi, mensuyu is a concentrate, dashi is not, all right? You, you usually use like about a quart of water to one piece of kombu and about an ounce of bonito flakes to make dashi, right? And so that's a quart of water, right? Uh, and mensuyu is concentrated. But mensuyu contains the dashi components, but not dashi itself. So mensuyu contains the kombu and the bonito flakes, uh, but no uh, pre-made dashi. Now let's look at this chart of uh, mensuyu. And uh, here I'm giving you three recipes. Um, one is mine. One is from uh, an internet source called Just One Cookbook, which has a lot of great Japanese uh, recipes and a lot of information about Japanese food. And um, then another uh, internet source called Masterclass. And uh, here you can see the, uh, uh, that the recipes are all different, but similar. They all use kombu, uh, they all use bonito flakes, and they all use shoyu, mirin, and sake, but in different proportions. Again, highly personal, highly intentional, and often secret to the chef. Now, since uh, mensuyu is a concentrate, we have to talk about uh, dilution. Okay, how do you dilute it? So if you're making a uh, tukitsuyu, which is for cold noodles, you have um, a certain amount of mensuyu in water, half cup of mensuyu to one and a half cups of water. If you're making uh, kakatsuyu for hot noodles, you use um, more water. 
because again, it's a lighter sauce. And then if you're making, using uh, mensuyu for say, uh, for uh, tensuyu to make another kind of a sauce, such as for donburi, you use another dilution and there are other, a couple of other uh, um, examples there as well. For nabamono, which is basically a hot pot, or for nimono, which is simmering things in the broth, different dilutions there. Now, I've given you also this comparison chart because you might have noticed that the names are very similar. When you're talking about a dashi based sauce, the hot broth is called kakajiro. If it's made from mensuyu, it's called kakatsuyu. All right? And if it's a cold broth, if it's dashi based, it's called tsukajiro. And if it's mensuyu based, it's called tsukitsuyu. Finally, I want to mention something about garnishes. Um, my, one of my recipes included grated daikon. As I said, that was more of a uh, garnish than actually part of the recipe. And after these sauces are made, they're often garnished with something. Uh, if they're being poured over uh, hot noodles, that's not the case. But if they are being used to dip something in, whether you're dipping cold noodles uh, into sukajiro or you are uh, uh, dipping um, uh, tempura into a sauce, uh, often they are uh, garnished with something. Uh, even if you have udon or if you have um, uh, soba noodles, uh, you may, uh, uh, and you're pouring hot broth over them, you may have some other of these things in there as garnishes and then you pour the broth over the top. And uh, grated daikon is very common to be used uh, in the sauce itself. Nori that has been uh, snipped into small pieces or, or flakes of nori, which is seaweed. Uh, also scallions that have been cut very thinly or chives, uh, sesame seeds, furikake, which is a mixture of uh, things like sesame seeds and nori and some other ingredients, um, which you, you buy, it, buy that prepared. Uh, or wasabi, uh, ginger sometimes, the ginger that has been pickled like you get with um, sushi or uh, fresh ginger that has been sliced or grated, uh, or garlic. Uh, usually this is garlic that has been uh, sliced. Okay, so when you're making these sauces, feel free to tweak any of these recipes in any way you want, but make them your own and make sure they're different. Again, if you're going to be making a hot sauce and a cold sauce and a dipping sauce, you can tweak them any way you want from these recipes, but make sure they're different from each other, okay? So, I hope this video has made sense of the dashi-based sauces. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.